Hey guys, this is part two. If you haven't checked out part one, go check that out first. Uh, Ramsey does have a plan. There's no way he's gonna fall for Sansa's right. What would I do? I know what I'd do. I'd kill Rickon and make John charge, make everybody else charge, and then swarm them. <sighs> Don't fall for it. This is not. Run to your brother. Oh, that's so much worse. The sooner you get to see him again. Oh, shoot. God damn it. He's gonna miss on purpose just to draw them out. Stop, stop, stop. Oh, he's, oh, he, has to, he has to try and save him, but. Signal to him. Tell him when to move. Which way to move. Tell, tell him to move. John, signal to. Can he. Ah, Jesus. Oh, he's playing with him. He's not even looking. He's not even- he's not trying. Look back to see where the arrow's coming from. Tell him to duck and weave or something. Tell him to change directions. He's there. Son of a- Bring him back. Bring him. Bring his body back. At least there's a chance, Melisandre. Don't. Turn back, John. Turn back. Oh. No. Good. Oh, jeez. Sansa was right. I can't believe none of his arrows hit his horse or- okay, it hit his horse. Come on, unlock some special power with the long claw, like the Zelda, like, blade beam or something. Do- do links up B, do links up B. Oh, his men made it. They don't care about killing their own men. They don't care about killing their own men. God dang it. John, get 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 your bearings. Oh jeez. It's all shot in one one take. Oh, damn. It doesn't matter. He just he can just keep doing this and he wins. It's over. Are those just a big pile of bodies? What the Holy crap. You're not breaking through, Longclaw. Thank you. Get up. On your feet, Commander. 1-1, <laughs> let's go. I mean, even Gren took down a... They're surrounded. It's over. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Oh, God. People are just dying on the outskirts. Just... Uh. What the hell? And they're on the, they're on the other side, too. <laughs> Just dragging people out from the other side. Come on, 1-1. One, one. Holy crap. Ah. Oh. Ramsey's still back here by himself. 
Tormund, no. Uh, don't trample on your commander. Oh my god. Oh. Getting claustrophobic in here. He can't breathe. Uh. I'm, ga I'm gasping for breath. Nice job, Tor oh my, he, he. <sighs> Veil, Mockingbird, <laughs> let's go, yes. <laughs> He's like, what the hell is that? Sansa, thank you. I'm so sorry you had to do this, but thank you. <sighs> let's finish this. <laughs> little fingers, smug little smile. Let's finish this. <laughs> uh, don't kill your own men too, your allies. <laughs> Look how happy she is. He's still fueled by rage. <laughs> Let's go. He's running. Babe, one one can just break through the doors. Oh, you a little scared now? Ow, 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 ow. Well, this battle's almost over and Ramsey hasn't even thrown, hasn't even done anything. Oh, damn. Ow. No. Is he the last of his kind? You had you suggested one on one combat, didn't you? Really? You want to do that now? Loose. Loose. I've reconsidered. I think that sounds like a wonderful idea. Oh my god. He wants me to stuff her. Want to kill your husband? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Melisandre. The battle is won. The battle is won one. Where is he? The hell? All memory of you will disappear. The dogs that he's let starve for seven days? They're loyal beasts. They were. Now they're starving. Killed by the ones he's tortured. Sorry, master. Oh! Holy crap! She was about to turn to go. She wants to watch. She can't even smile at. Oh, no, she's smiling a little bit. Ramsey.
MC Bolton is done. <sighs> what an incredible episode, guys. Uh, I honestly wasn't expecting to see so much non-Winterfell stuff, but I think that was actually a good decision. I didn't feel like the battle was too short or anything, so... Yeah, let's save the Battle of the Bastards for last, because that was intense. Uh, but Marine is under siege, and Tyrion... He was afraid of Daenerys. I, I, you could tell there was some fear in, in his eyes, and uh, honestly, I was afraid for him. I wasn't sure if Daenerys would see what he did, like negotiating with the Masters as a betrayal of what she was fighting for. I kept hoping he'd reveal something like I did it to keep the peace temporarily and buy time until he returned. But I liked his explanation too. He made Marine start to succeed again, and that's why the Masters are attacking. Makes sense. Uh, luckily, Daenerys doesn't come down too hard on him. Uh, I don't know if she doubts his loyalty at all, if that was what was going on, but I'd understand if she did, but it, it's, it's a tough situation. But uh, she even listens to him when he advocates against destroying entire cities, so... Yeah, Daenerys, she's a leader everyone gravitates towards, but she needs her advisors to rein her in a little bit. Uh, burning all the slave cities would not... she would kill all the uh, innocent people as well. Uh, but Tyrion explains what happened with Eris to her, and he brought up wildfire, and I have to believe that's of some significance. Uh, I don't know if they ever disarmed any of it. Uh, it doesn't sound like it though, because only he, only Jamie and the guy Jamie killed, and Eris, and now uh, I'm guessing Cersei and Tyrion know, and now Daenerys. Um, yeah, there's the fact that there's still wildfire all wildfire all over King's Landing. Like, can you imagine what an invader could do if they had that knowledge? Like, just burn the entire city to the ground to take it? Um, that sounds like a Littlefinger thing to do, actually. <laughs> actually, oh, wow. Yeah, Littlefinger could do that. Um, I don't think Daenerys would do that. Um, okay, she might, but her advisors would stop her. Um, but what if Daenerys is invading and Cersei is the one to set off the wildfire? Like, using it to destroy all the invading forces? That is something she would totally do. Uh, I do love the turnaround though, setting up a meeting for Terms of Surrender. Actually, we're here to discuss your surrender. Amazing. And uh, Tyrion with a thank you for the Armada, our queen does like ships. My headcanon is that he, Grey Worm, and Masande rela are relaxing later and then laugh at the joke. Uh, I need some water. Oh, I'm out of water. Dang it. Alright. Um, the masters are really shitty though. One of you must die. Him, 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 him. Um, so I'm glad that Grey Worm finishes the other two in one slash. I don't know if Daenerys' problem with her dragons killing humans without her say is solved, but uh, I guess she's moved on to bigger things. They'll get to burn humans, but they're going to be her enemies. <laughs> uh, so Viserion and Rhaegal are similar, or smaller, not similar, smaller. Um, they were smaller to begin with than Drogon, but with their time in captivity, I don't think that did them any favors either. Um... But I was saying back in season 4 or 5 that Daenerys doesn't need to be in a rush to get to Westeros. Like, you can build power, find allies, let your dragons grow. But it finally feels like she's ready now. Just like missing a few ships. Um, but she took the Armada from the Masters. And Yara and Theon arrived. That negotiation was so fun to watch. Um, Theon being bitten for who he was. Uh, brash, looking down on people. Um... Tyrion calls him out for it, but Theon supports Yara's claim. And yeah, ma marriage to Euron is a bit Euron. I keep saying Euron. That, that, that's right, I think. Uh, it's a bit too marriage to Euron is a bit too much for Daenerys, and uh, you could tell Daenerys likes the thought of seeing women in charge. And I love that Yara was like, "Yeah, I'm not demanding marriage, but I'm up for anything." Um, <laughs> I don't think we've had any LGBTQ like couples uh, in charge of a country in this universe, have we? Um, I'm sure there are people out there who ship them because of this one interaction. Uh, I don't know what their shipper name should be, though. Uh, Denera? Denara? 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 Nah. Mm. How about Yar... Yarneris? Yar... Yaraneris? They both sound good. Yar... Yar... But, like, you rarely use, like, someone's full name in their shipper name, right? So I think Yaraneris probably is more likely. Um, but Yaraneris sounds n nicer, I think. Uh, and I'm sure there's fan fiction everywhere, too. Like, Daenerys being like, I don't need those hundred ships. The only ship I need to conquer Westeros is our relationship. <laughs> okay, that was really bad. Um, 
And we have the prelude to the Battle of the Bastards. They have a meeting before the battle. I keep saying every time this happens that someone just needs to prepare an ambush in this situation and just take the out, take out the other side. Like, I don't care about honor or whatever else. Kill Ramsey right there. Kill Small John, and I don't know if the Karsark was with, with them, but kill him too, and the battle is as good as one. Uh, I really need that water. Uh, Ramsey proves he has Rickon with Shaggy Dog, Shaggy Dog's head, though. Uh, I'm surprised it hasn't decomposed by now. Did they, like, taxidermy it? Is taxidermy even a thing in this world yet? Um... Speaking of direwolves, though, that made me realize Ghost didn't enter this battle at all. Like, huh. I like I did like uh, John's strategy, though, uh, in that interaction. Like, 1v1 me, bro! Uh, too bad Ramsey didn't fall for it. Um, but John never planned for him to fall for it anyway. But uh, John, the redheads in his life didn't give him <laughs> much good advice. It was technically good advice, but it was just, like, useless advice. Like, Melisandre, like, do you have any advice? Don't lose. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Uh, but she's much less confident than before. She doesn't have that air of, like, I know everything anymore. Uh, I thought maybe someone would suggest Stark magic. Like, you have the power to cast shadows, Jon Snow. No. But uh, glad it didn't go that route. And then Sansa was like, I don't know what you should do, but don't do what he wants you to do. <laughs> and it's, like, so so obvious. But um, in all seriousness, though, Sansa has a much better grasp on politics than Jon does. Uh, she realizes Rickon won't come back alive. She knows Ramsay will play John. She doesn't want to go back to Ramsay at any cost, though. And uh, even though John says he'll protect her, she says that no one can protect her. No one can protect anyone. But, and I know she announced renounced this title, finally, a girl is no one. So, no one can protect her? Yeah. Uh, I don't know that the show writers meant to do that, though. Uh, it's possible, but I don't know. Could be fun. Uh, the night before the battle, Tormund and Davos, they both say they followed the wrong king all along. I don't know what they mean by... I don't know that they were the wrong king, it's just that they lost. And just because you lose doesn't mean you're wrong. I mean, show the show kills, has Stannis killing Shireen. Um, that made him the wrong king. But Tormund and Davos have a respect for each other despite their differences, and they both have decided to follow Jon now, so it's nice to see them not bickering a little bit. Um, but speaking of killing Shireen, Davos goes on his long walk and sees the stag he carved for her. Um, so he knows what happened. I'm pretty sure the stag was burned and was next to the pyre. And they, th the way Davos looked at Melisandre later pretty much confirms it, I think. Um, but yeah, there was no way Jon could stop himself from trying to save Rickon once uh, Ramsay brought him out um, and sent him running. I feel like he definitely John should have definitely rode back with Rickon's body though. Like they had a sound battle plan and losing his cool probably lost more lives than were necessary. I understand though, like he was blinded by rage. Um Davos can see that John is about to ride directly at Ramsay and gets the men ready to charge. That pretty much saved his life. I don't think as good as a swordman swordsman as John is, all those cavalry charging at him, I don't think he I think he was done if uh they didn't intercept it. Um, Sansa being like, don't do what he wants you to do, that's obvious. He said, that's obvious, and he immediately goes and does what Ramsay wants him to do. <sighs> that sucks. Um, but Davos saves, yeah, Davos saved Jon's life, I think. Uh, yeah, Jon riding on to battle, so Ramsay's strategy is practically perfect. Draw Jon out, and it seems like he sends an equal amount of men out to meet Jon's forces but then just has everyone else stand back and loose a ton of arrows into the fray. Like, he's essentially using the vanguard as sacrificial lambs to dwindle Jon's numbers. Actually, if I was Ramsay, I, would, I wouldn't I would have set an equal force. I would have sent enough forces to slow them down and then just rain as many arrows as possible so that you kill more um, of Jon's men than your own. Uh, meanwhile, Davos can't fire any arrows because each man they have is so valuable, they can't afford to hit their own men. Um... I wish one one had taken a huge bow though and uh, just launched it straight at Ramsey from the start. From the start, that would have been really fun to watch. Um, don't know where what happened to that huge bow uh, back at Castle Black, back at the Wall rather. Uh, that one tracking shot with John was really great. Uh, I wonder what they covered John's face with to make it look like there's a ton of blood on him. Actually, not a lot of people know this, but Kit Harrington actually killed a bunch of people and smeared their blood on his face for that role. Such a dedicated actor. Um, and as soon as Davos' regiment joins in, Ramsay has the whole force surrounded, and um, 
on three sides, and then the fourth side is blocked off by a freaking huge pile of bodies. Uh, it acts as a barrier, stopping them from retreating that way. And the battle started getting, like, claustrophobic really quickly. Like, even now, I'm, like, just thinking about it. It's, like, a day later, and I'm thinking about it, and I'm, my heart is... <sighs> yeah, it, reminded, it reminded me a little bit of the battle in Wakanda against M'Baku and uh, T'Challa. Just constantly less and less space to fight. Except that was one-on-one -on -one in Wakanda. This was... <sighs> thousands of people still the people on the outskirts wanted to get into the middle the people in the middle getting squished <sighs> yeah i had a hard time breathing just watching it and even thinking about it <sighs> i don't think i've ever seen anything like this battle in fiction and i've had these in i've had intense emotional reactions to some shows um the first one i remember is the end of castle season three uh roy montgomery if you know what i'm talking about you you know but uh, i've never had like a physical reaction i don't think that mimicked what john was going through like as he got short of breath i got short of breath i can't even really explain it it's just like i don't know if it's a i have a new phobia that i discovered uh I, i'm not claustrophobic in like small spaces but like that being trampled and being squished like that you think i wouldn't be scared of that given living in new york but constantly getting squished but um i think it's a combination of getting squished and not being able to breathe and all the blood and guts and everything going around. <sighs> I'm gonna stop talking about it because <laughs> I, I I can't even I can't even right now. Um, Sansa, I don't know why she didn't tell John that she called for Link Littlefinger's help. Um, they could have waited a few more hours to see if he would come or get some response from him, and there didn't need to be that many wilding and northern casualties. But then again, maybe Littlefinger didn't tell her he was coming. Um, scratch that. I think. I absolutely think he didn't tell her he was coming. Um, I think it was his plan to wait until the two sides took out as much of each other as possible before swooping in. Now, if he decides he wants to make a play for Winterfell, there won't be as many men to defend it. And uh, after the two sides nearly killed each other, he might have the biggest army north of King's Landing. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but it sound, it seems like it could be. Um, but yeah, whenever he shows back up on screen, Littlefinger, uh, I know he's planning something devious and... Even if he doesn't plan to take Winterfell by force, if he plans to ally with Winterfell to take King's Landing, like, preserving the life of his own men while gathering favor with the Starks is not a bad move. And freaking, freaking, freaking little finger. Uh, but Ramsay is forced to retreat to Winterfell. Like, seriously, how did he inspire so much loyalty? Like, Jon was in the thick of the battle from moment one. Ramsay, he fired some arrows at a defenseless young boy who was running away and did nothing else the entire battle until... Winterfell was taken. Um, yeah, one one breaks through the wall and fell to his knees. Um, I mean, how many giants are north of the wall? I'm afraid if there are any left, that they've all become whites already. So that's actually a pretty big concern. Uh, but now it's Ramsay's turn to be like, "Yo, one v one me, bro." Uh, John uses a shield and blocks all the incoming arrows and takes him down. But I swear, when he was punching Ramsay, I saw Ramsay smile for a second. I think John lets up on Ramsay simply because he saw Sansa and didn't and wanted to give her a turn, but oh man. And uh, she Rams uh, Sansa has Ramsay ripped to shreds by his own dogs. Oh, that was so intense. Uh, I thought they were actually pit bulls at first because of the dark, but uh, they're actually some other breed of dog. Um, I'm glad it wasn't pit bulls because they've been demonized enough as it is. Um, but I didn't think they'd actually show us the dog bite Ramsey's face. Like, such a dedicated actor, letting a dog bite his face for the camera. <laughs> okay, that's enough of those jokes for this episode. Um, but yeah, I wonder how many dog owners across the world, like, decided to feed their dogs a little extra that night, just um, after this episode aired. Um, for that matter, I wonder what a dog's re reaction would be to watching another dog bite a person's face. <laughs> Questions we'll never know the answer to, unless we can translate uh, dog speak. Um, but yeah, I was really afraid we'd lose Davos or Tormund this episode. Um, that either of those would have been devastating. One one was pretty devastating. Thousands of other soldiers, uh, Rickon, and those piles of bodies were huge. I, I'm actually surprised they found Rickon's body among everything. Um, but yeah, uh, they better burn all those bodies ASAP. Can you imagine them all coming back to life? Like, Prepare for the worst case scenario that the White Walkers make it this far. You gotta burn them all, just like right now. 
Um, but yeah, Rickon died. I don't... They didn't even try to have Melisandre revive him. Poor kid. Um, I don't know. He's gone for like three, maybe four seasons. Come back, Comes back for like a few episodes. We find out his direwolf is dead. And then Asha, his protector, dies. And then he dies. I don't think he... Did he even have any lines after he came back this season? I don't know. Uh, but we finally see the Stark banners get put back up at Winterfell. We see the Stark sigil... We'll see the Stark Sigil at Winterfell in the next opening episode, too. So that, that'll be fun. Uh, for once, I'm going to pay attention to that opening. I, I, I always forget to, because I'm talking about something else. I'm like, oh, this is the opening credits. Let's talk about something. Oh, wait. The, there's stuff going on here. Uh, I don't know what we'll see in the last episode of the first season. Of this, not the first season. Of this season. Uh, I wouldn't say no to some quiet, reflective moments in Winterfell. I don't know how far along Arya is in coming back to Westeros, but it'd be nice to see her a reunion between her and Sansa. Um... Arya tortured Sansa, but there's love there, and uh, John and Arya is that ha like um, is that happening? Just the reunion between them. I would love to see that. Uh, I guess my theory earlier about how the season will end won't come true because uh, like about the White Walkers appearing at the Wall uh, being the last shot of the season because Bran should make it to the Wall before the White Walkers, right? And I don't Im I, I think they're much further ahead than the White Walkers, so yeah. Uh, I'm so close to giving this more than five direwolves, guys. Uh, for those of you who haven't been around since the beginning, my direwolf score was actually originally supposed to be out of six, given how many direwolves were given to the Stark children. And um, it's a little weird out of six, but I've only ever given up to five anyway. So maybe I should lower my rating to be out of five just for simplicity, simplicity's sake. But then like break my own scale for like truly, truly worthy episodes. Um, yeah, but the last one I gave a 5 to was the Hodor episode, and I don't, is this really above that? You know what, yeah, it's, let, let's do, I'm not, I'm not gonna give it a 5 point, I'm gonna give it a 5.25, right there, in the middle, right there. Alright, uh, everyone, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube and want to watch the next three episodes right now. Make sure to check out the early access option on Patreon in the link in the description below. And if you want to see full episode reactions, it's down there too, uh, over here. Thanks for watching. Bye, friends.